Hi everyone, I'm Kimiko Tsukada and my co-author is Professor John Hajik from the University of Melbourne. The title of our presentation is Perception of Consonant Length in Familiar and Unfamiliar Languages by Native Speakers of Mandarin, Italian and Japanese. Although our movements are a bit restricted at the moment, and we need to present virtually rather than physically for now, opportunities to communicate in non-native languages are likely to increase. At the same time, we all know that becoming fluent in foreign languages is not easy, especially for adults. We believe that current understanding of how individuals process typologically unrelated multiple languages is insufficient and we would like to try to fill this gap. This study is about consonant length, that is singleton and geminate in Italian and Japanese. Both of them are quantity languages and use duration contrastively. For example, in Italian, echo means echo and Ecco means here it is. In Japanese, ika means below and ikka means lesson one. These pronunciation characteristics are known to be difficult for non-native learners, but as you see, this is important for communication. We have two research questions. The first one is whether Mandarin learners with high proficiency in Japanese are more or less accurate in length identification than Italian learners who have experience with consonant length in their own language. The second one is whether Mandarin learners who accurately identify Japanese consonant length also accurately identify Italian consonant length. In other words, is there a relationship between Mandarin learners' identification of Japanese and Italian? Our first aim was to compare the perception of consonant length contrast in Italian and Japanese by four groups of participants who differ in their first language and experience with consonant length. Our second aim was to advance our understanding of first and foreign language transfer effects in cross-language speech processing and foreign language pronunciation learning. To prepare the Japanese speech materials, we recorded seven Japanese speakers who read words and non-words with word media singleton and geminate. Unlike Italian, Voice geminates are limited in Japanese. For the Italian stimuli, we recorded three speakers who read words and non-words with a wide range of word medial consonants, including voice geminates. This slide shows characteristics of the Japanese and Italian stimuli presented to our participants. Gray bars showed the duration of the vowel preceding the target consonant, and white bars showed the duration of the target consonant. It's a bit crowded, but the bold horizontal lines show the median, and the red circles show the mean. Let's look at the white bars first. As expected, geminates are much longer than singletons. In Japanese, the mean duration of the singletons is 99 milliseconds and the mean duration of the geminates is 267 milliseconds. In Italian, the mean duration of the singletons is 101 milliseconds and the mean duration of the geminates is 257 milliseconds. So in both languages, geminates were more than 2.5 times as long as singletons. The gray bars look quite different for Japanese and Italian. The mean duration of the Japanese vowels preceding singletons was 111 milliseconds 
and the mean duration of the Japanese vowels preceding geminates was 123 milliseconds. The difference in these two values was not statistically significant. But in Italian, the mean duration of the vowels preceding singletons was 281 milliseconds, and the mean duration of the vowels preceding geminates was 142 milliseconds. There was a substantial difference of 139 milliseconds between the two values, which is consistent with previous work. We recruited four groups of listeners. The first group consisted of 10 native Japanese speakers with no knowledge of Italian. The second group consisted of 18 native Mandarin speakers who were advanced learners of Japanese. The third group consisted of 14 native Italian speakers who were elementary to upper intermediate learners of Japanese. The last group consisted of 14 native Italian speakers with no knowledge of Japanese. The first and last groups served as controls. None of them participated in the recording sessions and all reported normal hearing. They were mostly recruited from the student and staff population in their country of residence. What we asked our participants to do was an identification task. They heard a word or non-word and decided if it had a germinate or not in the word media position. And it was a self-paced task. This slide shows the correct identification by our four groups of listeners. Gray bars are for the Japanese stimuli and white bars are for the Italian stimuli. Not surprisingly, Japanese and Italian listeners were very homogeneous and they were at ceiling in their own language. You can see that the Japanese and Italian groups were more accurate in their native language than in non-native language. But the Mandarin group responded to Japanese and Italian in a similar way. If we focus on the gray bars or the Japanese stimuli, the native Japanese group was more accurate than all three non-native groups. But the Italian learners of Japanese were more accurate than the Mandarin learners of Japanese who had higher Japanese proficiency. The Italian listeners with no knowledge of Japanese did not differ from the Mandarin learners of Japanese. So a combination of Italian knowledge and Japanese learning experience may be necessary for accurate identification of Japanese consonant lengths. If we focus on the white bars or the Italian stimuli, both groups of Italian listeners were more accurate than the non-native groups. But the Japanese listeners with no knowledge of Italian were more accurate than the native Mandarin listeners. This finding suggests that although the Japanese listeners could use their knowledge of Japanese to perceive Italian length distinctions, the Mandarin listeners could not use their knowledge of Japanese to perceive Italian length distinctions in the same way. The next slide summarizes the results that I've just presented. This slide shows the correct identification of the Japanese long and short consonants. Gray bars are for the long consonant or geminate, and white bars are for the short consonant or singleton. You can see that the Mandarin listeners were more accurate for the geminate than for the singleton, but other groups were more balanced. If we focus on the geminate, the native Japanese group was more accurate than all three non-native groups who did not differ from one another. For the singleton, the Japanese group never misperceived any tokens and could not be included in the analysis. Of the three non-native groups, 
The Italian group with Japanese experience was more accurate than the other two groups who did not differ from each other. Thus, while the Italian learners of Japanese were less accurate than the native Japanese listeners for the Germanate, they were more native-like for the singleton. As for the native Mandarin listeners, even with advanced proficiency of Japanese, they did not outperform the native Italian listeners with no Japanese experience. The next slide summarizes the results that I've just presented. Let's look at the correct identification of Italian long and short consonants. Only the group effect was significant, and both groups of Italian listeners were more accurate than the non-native groups. The Mandarin group was interesting because they were more accurate for the target singleton in Italian, but more accurate for the target geminate in Japanese. The next slide summarizes the results that I've just presented. Our final analysis focused on Mandarin listeners' identification of Japanese and Italian consonant length to examine if there was a relationship between the two. This slide shows the percentages of correct consonant length identification by 18 Mandarin learners. Percentages of the Japanese stimuli is on the x-axis and percentages of the Italian stimuli is on the y-axis. Although it may look like there is a positive correlation, when we moved an outlier, the correlation became non-significant. So as a group, length identification in Italian and Japanese by Mandarin listeners may be unrelated. But having said that, the top five participants who scored above 95% in Japanese also scored higher than 90% in Italian. So there may be a subgroup of phonetically talented learners. The next slide summarizes the results that I just presented. Firstly, Based on the results from the advanced Mandarin learners of Japanese, we would like to conclude that speech processing skills acquired in one foreign language, Japanese, may not automatically transfer to another foreign language, Italian. Secondly, we confirm that knowledge of Italian consonant length positively transferred to the perception of Japanese consonant length. Finally, Based on the results from the Italian learners of Japanese, both knowledge of Italian consonant length and Japanese learning experience was beneficial for highly accurate identification of Japanese consonant length. Thank you very much for watching.